Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, here, Probably one of the most interesting things that we're going to learn about in this unit is this particular video, Houston. We have a problem. We're going to talk about volcanic hazards. What damage can volcanoes do? Well, it turns out, well, there's a lot of things. So let's talk about them in a table. Well, the most obvious thing we've all probably thought about is lava flow in a shield volcano. The effect of this, of course, can be destruction of, of trees, plants, forests, houses, buildings. If the lava flows come into your house, you're done. <laughs> There's nothing you can do to stop. It's just going to happen. Uh, but it's slow and it's not uh, super destructive immediately. Uh, so I think we're familiar with that. We've talked already about pyroclastic flows, but don't forget this is hot ash gas. Uh, lava fragments, I'll say frags, uh, they move by gravity. So here's a picture of the city of St. Pierre. St. Pierre was a city in the Caribbean, it was a thriving city, and then the volcano nearby had an explosive eruption, the pyroclastic flow happened, and in the city of St. Pierre, Everybody died except one man. The only man who survived was the one who was in the dungeon underground. Everybody else died because the hot gas and fragments burned everybody up. Just, yeah, nasty. A lahar is another interesting thing. So let's take a look. So Lahar is a hot mud flow. Now you saw that in the Mount St. Helens video. It's a hot mud flow, again, crazy, often caused by melting ice. Again, this happened on Mount St. Helens. It was uh, a, a mountain that had, you know, a glacier on the top because it was high elevation and snow and instantaneously an entire mountain of ice melts flows down now it's hot it's boiling it knocks everything down lahar very dangerous very dangerous anything in its path over game over right um bombs these are called lava bombs by the way so it it's like a pyroclastic flow but they're big rocks but they're big bombs that are like like boom like this big um there's actually size differentials between you know ash versus bombs etc cetera, etc cetera. and as it flies to the earth if you get hit by it in fact let's watch a short video clip now to those terrifying moments on that tour boat nearly two dozen people injured by a lava bomb with the huge chunk of molten rock crashing down from hawaii's kilauea volcano ABC's Will Carr has the latest. Watch as molten rock, ash, and debris all explode hundreds of feet into the air off the coast of Hawaii's Big Island Monday. In the crosshairs, this lava tour boat. Carrying over 50 passengers and crew. This passenger video capturing the chaotic moments after the explosion. It just exploded straight out at the boat. We could hear the rocks hit the boat and the um, people yelling. Authorities say the boat was on a tour when a lava bomb fueled by the erupting Kilauea volcano went off. A boulder the size of a basketball smashing through the roof, injuring almost two dozen people on board. Kilauea has been erupting since May 3rd, destroying businesses, schools, and over 700 homes in the process. I was able to look back at where I was sitting, and that there was a big piece of lava stuck in the handrail right next to where my elbow was. So I know it was it was a close call. This morning, with that hole still in the top of this boat, the Coast Guard is now investigating if the boat went inside of a safety zone and got too close to that lava. So, <laughs> on Hawaii, they, they, they got hit by a bomb. And the gases, all right? So, 
Oftentimes, a gas that's inside of a volcano is something called sulfur dioxide. We, SO2 is the chemical formula of it. And when you react this with water, it turns into like water in the air. It turns into something called sulfuric acid. And if this flies through the air and you happen to be in its path, you're breathing sulfuric acid. Human bodies don't do well with sulfuric acid. We, we have sulfuric acid in the back room. If you put that in your eyeball, you don't see after like three seconds ever again. It's very dangerous stuff when it's concentrated, but even though it's not so concentrated, it's all bad for any living thing. Um, in, in Iceland, interesting story, in Iceland in 1783, okay, they had a huge uh, fusion of sulfur dioxide in one of their uh, volcanoes erupted, it killed 50% of their livestock and 25% of the people died. Not because of ohar or bombs or lava flow, but because of the gases. So it can produce these nasty gases that could be very dangerous if you are in the area. And then of course uh, the tsunami. We learned about this in earthquakes and all that kind of stuff, but a classic one that happened in 1883. One of the most interesting volcanoes that ever happened was called Krakatoa. And because of the landslide and the, and, the, and the pyroclastic flow hit the water, it displaced so much water, there was a tsunami, and 36,000 people died. Most, most of them as a result of the tsunami, not the pyroclastic flow and all that stuff. Some did that. The boom, they said, was big enough that people heard it for like, like 500 miles away. I mean, it was crazy. And people who were, in, it was, it's an island in the, in the uh, South Pacific, kind of near Indonesia. And uh, people who were on islands that were ish close, uh, their eardrums blew out. So these are the hazards of a volcano. And then let's close with something crazy. So when we talk about a big volcanoes, we have this thing called the VEI, the Volcanic Explosivicity Index. And the scale is a scale from, you know, zero to eight. And Mount St. Helens was a, was a four. All right, a four out of eight. Have there ever been any eights? And the answer is yes. And when they have a number around eight, I think it even can go above an eight, we call it a super volcano. Okay, and the classic one we talk about is Yellowstone. Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, not terribly far from us, and it had a VEI of eight. And the eight has to do with the number of square miles of, of rock and debris that gets spread over the earth. And so when it has an eight, it's greater than 240 cubic miles. Now, do you realize how much that is? <laughs> Take a, 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 a square that's 240 miles. It's probably 240 miles from Houston to Dallas. I bet that's a, probably a reasonable number. So you make a box that's 240 miles by 240 miles and then up 240 miles. And you put all that rock and when it explodes, it spreads wherever it spreads. When, when, when Yellowstone last went 600,000 years ago, uh, it covered this much of the United States. Actually, in this picture that you're seeing, you can actually see you can see different flows at different times. They, they can map it. At some point, you could even see it reached Houston. And uh, there's, there's some scary thoughts. Could Yellowstone ever re-erupt? And the, the, probably the answer is it's going to, because it's, it's, there's a hot magma chamber underneath. It's, it's always active. It's always having excitement things happening. Now, are we need to worry about it. Well, if it happens in our lifetime, it's going to destroy most of the United States. Let's just say it. <laughs> uh, but it could happen any time in the next, say, 600,000 years. So, uh, but some people say we're due. Interesting. I don't know. We'll know because it's, uh, it's going to have, you know, the harmonics. It's going to have the, the cluster of uh, earthquakes. But it's going to be a mad rush to get out of America if that happens. <laughs> so don't overthink it. But they're pretty cool, too. I mean, uh, most of Yellowstone National Park is just a big caldera from the explosion. All the cubic miles of material that got spread all over the uh, earth. And, you know, another thing that the, we talk about. Actually, I forgot to mention one other thing. Duh. Mr. Bergman. Ash. Um, ash is a huge problem, right? Ash can, uh, and this, the ash was, when we talk about super volcanoes, the ash is what got spread all over the, all the continental United States. But the ash has problems. It, when we've had some volcanoes in, say, Iceland recently, it's shut down air traffic because the ash is clogs the airplanes. Ash can cover people. The ash itself is caustic if you breathe. It's like breathing in little tiny rock fragments. It's horrible on your lungs because it's like little breathing in like tiny pieces of glass. Uh, so the ash can be very bad in a, a volcano. So that's one of the biggest hazards right there. So, uh, yeah, do volcanoes have hazards? You bet.
Now the good news is they don't happen that often, at least the explosive kind, and the ones that ooze, we know all about those. Uh, we know when they're doing it and we can watch and we can not build our houses in the wrong places. Um, and some people still do, but um, volcanoes, they're awesome. They're really cool. In Houston, I think, I bet you're as fascinated with this as I am, because I think it's just crazy weird. What an amazing planet we live on that's got all this sort of awesome stuff happening. We don't have a class. We don't have a class. We don't have a problem, class. We'll see you in class.